I'd see him sitting on that couch all day long, just staring at that Hollywood hogwash. Our favorite show was Hollywood Hogwash. Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Hollywood Hogwash. I'm Andrew Pisano, along with my brother Joe Pisano, Josh Reese, and Aaron Rosa. Welcome back, everybody. We were gone for a week. Okay. Now we are back to do X-Men Apocalypse. Oh yeah, underrated movie. Yeah. Wonderful ending. Wonderful uh, ending. Didn't even realize uh, until right before we started the movie that Josh never saw it. No, I wow. didn't. And I was I was pleasantly surprised. I was like, all right, X-Men. Not too bad. Yeah. Wow. This, this wow. is the X-Men trilogy to watch. Mm. You know? Uh, yeah, people don't like this movie. I think, I think the reason why is because Apocalypse looks nothing like how Apocalypse looked in the comics. Mm. I remember when this movie came out, and even before, you know, it actually came out, like when it was just trailers, people were already shitting on it because Oscar Isaac looks nothing like Apocalypse from the comics. Mm. And I think fans, like, you know, like uh, Super X-Men fans were upset about that. It didn't really bother me because I'm not the, you know, biggest X-Men fan there is. I watch the cartoons, but... You're not a purist. Not a purist, no. I was a little worried when they were making this movie and some of the production shots came out and we got our first look at Apocalypse. It was like, yeah. oh, that looks kind of dumb. Well, I remember they said but, he looks like a Power Ranger villain. Yeah. Because yes. like without, you know what yeah. I mean? And he kind of does, yeah. granted, but yeah. I think Oscar Isaac uh, yeah. did a you know pretty awesome performance. So that this movie for you is probably how I feel about Man of Steel, where you really enjoy it. Uh -huh. It's not your favorite X Men movie, but you enjoy it. Yeah. But a lot of people shit on it and don't like it. And right. It's like I, I don't get that. I liked this movie. Yeah, Man of Steel was. Uh, I remember the first time I saw it, I really liked Man of Steel. Um, but yeah, there are some. You know, it's not a perfect movie or anything like that. But yeah, it's not a perfect movie. But like you were saying about the way Oscar Isaac looked, he may have looked a little bit off. Yeah. But he's better than any DC villain that DC has ever had. Right. So, you know. Well, and also the end of this movie just gives me goosebumps and chills and almost makes me cry every time. Like, uh, it's yeah. so powerful. It is. When Jean finally lets go. It's so And great. when he gives back more of her memories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That kind of, like, really gets me emotionally, too. So, I think, yeah. it, I think in terms of most people, there's a big drop-off to this movie. Because, like, if you just use, uh, say, the Rotten Tomatoes user scores like the regular people scores yeah right. days of future past was like 90 and this one was like 65 really yeah, that days, of, days yeah. of future past is you know easily the highest rated x-men movie for sure oh i mean that's it's like a perfectly sung classical music piece that movie it's just got such a great story you know beginning middle and end yeah. but but as a trilogy i mean it's pretty good yeah, pretty good. I'm a little bit scared of what the next X Men iteration is going to be like because it's hard to. Beat uh, I mean, this. a second reboot is wow. almost ridiculous, especially this fast. Yeah, I know that they're just trying to get make money. And well, it's it's really not. It's more of a soft reboot because the end of the Marvels. It's st that's still Kelsey Grammer. You yeah, know what I mean, like right. like this was a soft reboot. Now they're doing another soft, soft reboot, reboot, if you would, unless you know. Uh, unless, I mean, look, there's a lot of rumors about Deadpool, what they're going to do with Deadpool. There's rumors about all the uh, X-Men getting killed off or something, which be would be hilarious. But also, if they do it a certain way, it could anger a lot of people. Yeah. Like, I don't want to see Hank, Mc Hank McAfee, like, fucking die. And <laughs> we've seen Professor X die in so many movies now. Yeah. Yeah. Like, all that. So, I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens. Here's the interesting question. What's, what's the best? I think I have a guess what you're going to say, but what's the better movie, First Class or Apocalypse? I would say First Class. Same. Probably same. Like my... But but the payoff at the end of this is so much is better so good. than well, anything it in is. First Class. The though. end is is amazing. The end, it's the best ending to all, any of those movies, but like... But yeah, I mean, First Class and Days of Future Past are so neck and neck for me. Like, sometimes it's hard to pick. Like, I really, really? have issues picking one or the other just wow. because... Yeah. Um, so Apocalypse is definitely third, but it's still really good. It's my second favorite trilogy ever after The Dark Knight Rises. I can't think of another trilogy I love as much because 
Back to the Future 3 is just, you know, a big drop off, I feel, uh, from the first two. What, just a fun Western. Yeah, sure. <laughs> what What was the joke that they said in the movie? It's it's hard to do it right a third time? Uh, no, she says, uh, <laughs> we all agree that the third movie is always the worst. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. But, but, but again, it was still a good movie. I, yeah. still, I still love it. You as know? far as thirds go, it might be the best third out there. Well, maybe. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, we're going to uh, dive into Apocalypse in full detail later. First, we have to thank a couple new patrons. Uh, first time ever, thank you to Nick Brazel. Uh, thank you to No Way Rich Swan. Remember him? Uh, Remember Rich Swan? Oh, he was married to the, one of the uh, uh, referees, right? No, that's racist. Uh, you're thinking <laughs> of someone else, Josh. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, I always have to edit this podcast because of Josh. No, Rich Swan was one of the 205 Live guys. Yeah. That, no, no, no. It's not. No. Oh, no that's way, Leon Jose. Rock, Leon you Rock. fucking idiot. God no way, damn Jose. It. Uh, well, no, oh, that's yeah, racist. I guess, I guess it's a combination of both of them. <laughs> Rich Swan was the guy that danced, and then he was terrible. But, yeah, no way Rich Swan has been a patron of uh, What's Wrong With Wrestling, so it makes sense that that's his name. Well, welcome on over, brother. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, last but not least, what are those? Remember that uh, catchphrase from <laughs> 10 years ago? Yeah. <laughs> what yeah. are those? <laughs> it's back. Yeah. Uh, so thank you to those three people for signing up at patreon.com slash Hollywood Hogwash. Uh, we got brackets up there. We did, uh, what, hottest 90s crush. Mm. We did uh, best TV intro of all time. Oh, my, with the four quadrants. Four quadrants, yes, yeah, that, was, that was a lot of fun. Yes, we're currently uh reviewing Echo. We have the season finale coming out this Thursday, mm. and uh, we also have like The Last of Us, we've done Loki, uh, a lot of uh shows, and maybe some more brackets coming soon. We'll see. So fun, fun times. Be sure to sign up patreon.com slash Hollywood Hogwash. All right, before we get to the news and rumors, we got to do the fan awards. Oh, the Hollywood oh, right. Hogwash Fan wow. Awards. Yes. First you annual? Guys, second no, annual? No, no, no. We did it last year. Second annual. Might be. Yeah, I think it's the first one. Yeah, because Hogwash isn't, uh, you know, isn't old enough. So, yeah, I guess it's the second annual Hollywood Hogwash Fan Awards. You guys uh, gave us your submissions, and now we're going to reveal them here. All right. Worst TV show of 2023. They agree with us. Hmm. Everyone feels the same way about Secret Invasion. Yes. Oh, yes. It's such a shitty show. Like, only two other people pick something else, and one of those was AEW Dynamite, so... <laughs> I mean, that also fits. Fair. Fair. <laughs> like, what would you rather watch? Uh, two hours of AEW Dynamite or two hours of Secret Invasion every week? I don't know. That's pretty rough. Is Kill Self an answer? Like, uh. <laughs> at least in Dynamite, you're like, well, maybe Christian Cage will come out. Yeah. But nothing was enjoyable about Secret Invasion. No. Maybe Samuel L. Jackson will murder his his scroll wife. No, <laughs> no. I guess not. Not at no. all. No, no, no. Uh, all right. Best TV show of 2023. We actually have to make uh, some sort of judgment call here or oh. maybe a vote mm. because three shows tied Ooh. for best for best. Interesting. Mm. We have Loki, Gen V and Succession. Hmm. All tied for best show, which, by the way, I'll reveal right now. I uh, just started watching Succession this oh, week. Good. I watched the first season. Yeah. And yeah, it, it took a few episodes, but then it got really fucking funny. Yeah. So Josh is right. Uh, so it's a comedy. It's good. <laughs> wow. It's really good. Yeah. It's also a little fucked up, but oh, it's, yeah. it's a really good show. You starting to see the similarities in our family? Yes. I mean, it's yeah. great. It's filmed. They shoot <laughs> oh, it. Okay. Well, I mean, <laughs> no, no. It's fucking hilarious. I've talked about it with Jewel, especially when you get into season two. Yeah. It's kind of funny. Right. Well, I've only seen season one so far, but a few uh, really. There's a sister who thinks she's smarter than she is. There's a. Yeah, yeah. There's a brother who thinks he's the man and he's yeah. not. There's a wisecracking brother, and then there's yeah. a brother who kind of stays out of everything. Right. Like, hmm, this is interesting. <laughs> yeah. Wonder who we all are. <laughs> Except none of us dates an escort. That's the only difference. Uh, <clears throat> that's a letdown. Uh, so what are we going to pick? If, by, if I had to pick between these three, I would go Gen V. I would go Gen V. I think I'd go Loki. Uh, Aaron? I think I'd go Loki. Ooh, that's a really tough one, but I'd have to go Gen V. All right. Really show. Gen V wins. Yep. There you go. Uh, all right. Worst movie of 2023. It was a close one, but that goes to 
Barbie. I'm a Barbie girl. Blah, blah, blah. Which, oh my gosh, guys, did you see like Barbie was nominated for best film at the Oscars? I mean, that's just really, really cool it just that make... they could nominate Barbie for best movie, yet The Dark Knight, Dark Knight. does not get nominated. Did Randy Correct. Orton have something to say about that? Uh, I think he did. Stupid, yeah, stupid, stupid, so stupid, stupid, stupid. It doesn't stupid, make sense. Stupid, 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 stupid. I think exactly. we mentioned this already as well. What a slap in the face. It's a woman empowering movie. Ryan Gosling, Oscar nomination. Yes, yes. Margot Robbie, nope. nope. <laughs> That's terrible. How do you even do that? How do you nominate the movie and the right. main lead male actor? And he was like, okay in it. Right. Like, uh. Like, she was but, but great also, in this also, movie also, as an actress. You know what I mean? It's, it's nominated for best movie. <laughs> movie was kind of dumb, but she was okay. great. It's nominated for best movie. Like you just said, n not for best actress, no. not for best director. Like, like <laughs> wait, what? Wait, what? what? Yes. So they sucked at directing and acting, but the movie was awesome? Right. Well, fuck off. That yeah. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> so well, fucking dumb. Well, Joe, it's all about patriarchy. Yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> all about the patriarchy. <laughs> That's so. Ryan Gosling defeated patriarchy, so, you know. Actually, yeah. no, I don't think he did. Oh. And then finally, we... Uh, yeah, go ahead. So am I the only one of us three that hasn't seen that yet? I guess so, yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then finally, for best movie of 2023, it was close, but Spider-Man across Spider -Man? the Spider-Verse yep. uh, won that. That's right, 100%. Followed by John Wick and Guardians of the Galaxy hmm. tying for second place. That's another thing that sh I think we might have to add to the list, maybe after Echo, but Continental is out. Oh, oh, it yeah. is. Sure, yeah. sure. Yeah, but it's, yeah. I don't know. It's just, just How a much? thought. How much? Keanu a thought. Reeves is in that show? None. I think zero. Yeah. Yeah. So thank Let's you for submitting. Let's do a submitting. Batman show without Batman. <laughs> Gotham. <laughs> thank you uh, for submitting. Well, they're doing the uh, movie with, um, uh, what's her name? Fuck. Uh, Ana de Armas is going to be in a spinoff of John Wick. So yeah, we'll see that. Sure. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy. But yeah, thanks for uh, sending in your submissions. Um, yeah, we'll do them again next year. All right, on to news and rumors, a.k.a. the Hollywood hogwash. So there's a big rumor out there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the first trailer mm -hmm. for Deadpool 3 yes. is dropping during the Super Bowl. God <laughs> <damn it. laughs> uh. So now I'm more excited for <laughs> that excited. than the actual game. Yeah, for sure. Oh, my gosh. Hey, Aaron will have something to enjoy at the Super Bowl. Yeah, sure. Shut up. Uh-huh. We'll see what happens. I can't wait to say I told you so. Wow. All right. According to Matthew Vaughn, uh, he says uh, this. that's the director of First Class. He also directed Kick-Ass. Right. He says Deadpool 3 is going to be the jolt that brings the MCU back to life. The few snippets that I know about Deadpool versus Wolverine are unbelievable. Hmm. So did he just reveal the title of the movie? Deadpool versus Wolverine. He called it Deadpool versus Wolverine. It's not just Wol oh, Deadpool 3. Well, I mean, I'm just that's what he said. Right. So that's that's interesting. I imagine Wolverine's gonna be in the title somewhere. You would think so. You can't <laughs> not include Hugh Jackman, you know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I this mean, movie is Deadpool and Wolverine, so right. I mean, the other thing is like Naming it Deadpool versus Wolverine is a great way to make fun of Batman v Superman. Of course. You know what I mean? Of course. Like, that'd be hilarious. Yeah. Like, what was that movie called? It was Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice or some shit? What Dawn was of it? Justice. Yes. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, what if they call it Deadpool v Wolverine, you know, Dawn, and like just... Rebirth of MCU. Or, <laughs> or just like, yeah, make fun of Dawn of Justice somehow. Dawn of X-Force. Yeah, they, <laughs> right. So we'll see. I'm very excited about this. So every Everyone's speculating what's going to be in this trailer. Right. You They're saying it's not just going to be a teaser. Like, it's going to be a full a trailer. A full trailer. Yeah, you keep on hearing so many good things about it. And, I mean, expectations. I mean, they're through the roof, right? Through like, the roof. The expectations are the best movie ever. I mean, really. When is this supposed to come out? May? I think June? May, yeah. Oh, my God. It's soon. It was originally going to be October, and they moved it up. Let me see again real quick. I think, I think it it's is. the beginning of the summer movie. Yeah, I think it is May. Let me see. Uh, oh, July. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that still works. Wow, 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 wow. Can't wait. Also, uh, Deadline reports that Brad Pitt will star in Quentin Tarantino's final film uh, titled The Movie Critic. Oh. 
Uh, the synopsis on IMDb says, the story of an irreverent critic in 1970s California who of reviews <laughs> mainstream movies for a porno magazine called The Pop Star Pages. Oh, God. Yeah. How many feet? <laughs> over under 50 feet. <laughs> yeah, over. Yeah. But, you know, like, okay, it's a Tarantino film. Uh, I'm excited about it. The synopsis doesn't sound great, but it could be, uh, you know. Look, like, I've always he said. He can't go out with a wet fart. You know, it's got to be a good movie. I mean, look, I didn't really like his last two. I didn't yeah. like uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I mean, without the ending scene, it's such right. a slow movie. Yeah. Like, the good whole, acting, but it, such a you slow movie. Like, in my opinion, you know, it's not all right. In my opinion, I didn't care about Leonardo DiCaprio's character at all. No. Like, it should have just been about Brad Pitt's Brad character. Pitt. Yeah. Right. He's the only interesting one. Right. The fight, I do watch the fight with Bruce Lee a lot oh, on it's YouTube. Great. That's great. great. There's like a couple of really good scenes, but most of the movie is fucking boring. Yeah. And then I didn't like Hateful Eight either. Like, I really did not like Hateful Eight. It wasn't <laughs> great. Yeah. So we'll see, you know. We'll see what happens with this. Yep. Obviously, I'm going to see it, but yeah. Uh, but it's not coming out till next year, I believe. Uh, also, Beetlejuice 2 has a release date. Oh, my God. September 6th of this year. Holy shit, this year. Yeah. Wow. Like 40 years later. <laughs> is, I, that, is, is it going to be? It's never good. It's never right? good. But is I, it ever good when they make a movie even 10 years later, 20 years, but 40 years later? It's never good. Hold on, I, hold on. Michael Keaton. Yeah, that's, I mean, sure. Yeah. He's well, great. Okay, yeah, I said Michael Keaton about yeah. The Flash. And <laughs> that's the true. Flash was The Flash. Yeah, but <laughs> Michael Keaton, his part in it was great, and sure. he's the star. This isn't called... Right. Some, it's, my, it's Beetlejuice. Yeah, yeah. He's Beetlejuice. the guy. By the way, I do at least like that instead of Beetlejuice 2, it's... Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. The movie is the <laughs> title. The nice. title is called is Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. Yeah, Uh-oh. Does that mean there's nice. a third one? Well, there's got to be, right? <laughs> well, yeah, that's what I was thinking. The third. Yeah. Interesting. Winona Ryder and uh, Catherine O'Hara are reprising their roles as well. Yep. So, yeah. Oh, we'll Winona see. Winona Ryder and uh, what's her face is in this too, right? Uh, uh, Kevin's mom. That's, yeah, Catherine O'Hara. Mm-hmm. No, um, oh. the actress oh, that's Jenna playing Wednesday. Ortega, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, she's like perfect from Wednesday for movie. Yeah, right, think. right, right. I think she plays Winona's daughter, which is uh, awesome. yeah, that's yeah, 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 right, right, right. Yeah. Also, uh, The Last of Us has hired directors from Loki, Succession, and Watchmen for season two. Yeah, so that's good news. And also, speaking of Catherine O'Hara, she's going to be in season two really yeah oh she's great they don't say as what though yet. she's great in everything yeah can i mention one little quick side last of us thing yeah apparently neil Druckmann says he's figured out the concept for last of us part three i saw that as well yeah the video game yeah mm. i'll definitely be playing that if that comes out mm. but uh i mean just the fact they thought of the concept means that that's years away like oh, really I mean, a game like this yeah. takes a fucking... It's one of the best games ever. Like, it takes a long time to make these games. Also, Variety reports that Jim Carrey is returning as Dr. Robotnik for Sonic 3. Oh. So I guess he didn't retire, after all. Oh, no. Because he previously announced that he retired. Yeah. Um, but what if Jim Carrey, like, only does Sonic movies okay. for the rest of his life? Because you know what his last two movies were? Sonic and Sonic 2. Oh, Jesus. Did what you was hear it before that? I don't know. Something bad. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> he did that TV show that I didn't watch, but... The movie I, with Steve Carell, The Magic? Um, oh, God, no. That can't... It, that wasn't that recent. I do like that movie. <laughs> the, <laughs> no, that was not good. <laughs> Burt Wonderstone? That was, hor that was I, horrible. I like the movie. I'm sorry. You like Magic. I mean, so do I, I but like it still has to be good. <laughs> Did you hear who else signed Come on? Come on, Sonic? James Gandolfini. I like tits. The movie has tits. <laughs> Two thumbs on tits. <laughs> I don't even remember what James Gandolfini does in that movie. Yeah, it's a good dark one. crimes. Dark yeah. crimes. Who are you? <laughs> dark crimes. <laughs> who are? Oh, Dumb no. and Dumber Two. <laughs> oh no! And a cameo in Anchorman Two. There was kick ass too. Oh god! One, there was one funny part in Dumb and Dumber Two, and it's that part. Yeah, when they get the shagging wagon back and immediately wreck, immediately <laughs> wreck it. The only good part. Of it's the, the only movie. funny part. This is his last good role, and that was ten years ago. Well, we'll argue about that one. I know I, you I didn't will like kick ass too, but I will say he plays Doctor Robotnik 
pretty well. He does. Yeah, I, no, I enjoy. Sure. Really does. I enjoy the fuck out of it. Yeah, but it yeah. seems like that's all he's gonna do from now. It's right. funny, like. The last thing he did was a music video for the weekend. He was in two music videos what? for the weekend. Yeah, never saw those. I, but he's back, at least for Sonic Three. Did you hear who else they got for Sonic Three? Uh, I know I must have forgot. Uh, Kristen Ritter, Jessica Jones. Oh, okay. She'll she'll play one of the hedgehogs. I'm guessing. <laughs> we'll voice one of the hedgehogs. Maybe a. Oh, what was Sonic's girlfriend's name? Was it I don't Le- remember. Yeah. Layla? Layla? I don't remember. Layla. I, don't, I never got, like, once he started getting girlfriends, like, I stopped playing. He's pl- got a like, Sonic family. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like the original Sonic games on the Genesis. Once he started fucking chicks, you know, I was a kid. I, I didn't well, get it. No, once they started, once they changed the Sonic games where you just hold up the whole game, I, I just, yeah, I don't like those as much. Well, they, they also did put out, like, a little teaser. It didn't show anything, but there's a laugh at the end of the teaser. And people are speculating that that could be uh, Darth Vader. What? Yeah. We're talking about Sonic? Sonic, yeah. They put out a little tiny teaser. Darth? No, they didn't. Yeah. You watched some fan-made trailer, you idiot. No. I don't know. You fucking <laughs> No. You watched some fan made trailer. Did, I, Darth I did Vader's not. gonna be in the Sonic movie? Josh, what the no not, not, first of all, no, he's not. Not Darth Vader. I meant Hayden Christensen. Uh, you said Darth, Darth Vader, motherfucker! He's, he's not Darth, Darth Vader, Vader though. No, he's, he's not. not. Yes. He's Anakin. Josh! If you would have said Anakin Skywalker, Darth it Vader been... and Anakin, they're both wait, wait, the same. Hold on. Let's, no, let's they're not. Through, they're let's both go, the wait, same. let's go through this again. The end of the trailer features Hayden Christensen laughing? No, it's the people are saying that the laugh sounds like Hayden Christensen. What, what is his laugh? What are you like? talking about? I'm just telling you what people are saying. No one even knows who that is, you idiot. They don't know who Hayden, Hayden Christensen. Christensen? Yeah. Jesus Christ! Josh. Oh Lord! Oh Lord! I can't believe y'all guys don't know. You this. know, Andrew, it's kind of crowded in it's here. It's crazy. <laughs> it's you know, crazy. Four of us. But y'all guys are not time aware to drop of that. One. Yeah. That's I know insane. There insane. was there was some review that likes Aaron and my perspective <laughs> as older guys. Oh, You're boy. the man. So uh Josh, uh odd man out. Oh, he did, I mean, I guess what we'll see. I, I can't wait till the jo- I told you so, motherfuckers. <laughs> You're goddamn and then right. Darth Vader's in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> I keep fucking receipts. Yes, I yes, keep you receipts. Do. You sure do, oh, pal. Yeah. You know what? I'll throw this out there. If Darth Vader's in a Sonic movie, I'll quit this show. <laughs> There you go. Hold you'll on. have less room in here. You'll, you'll have more room Is in here. Is this a top three Josh take all time? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Like, hey, guys, I just got breaking news. <laughs> Darth Vader inside. You can say, I, got, I got the scoop. <laughs> you can say anything. Hayden Chris- I said Darth Vader, but I meant Hayden Christensen. But that's not it's, even a thing you would do to put in a trailer and be like, holy fuck, it's Hayden Christensen. Yes. No one knows who he is. Yeah. What? Everyone yeah. knows who he is. No. Oh, he's, I, the only way people know him is because he's Anakin Skywalker. He's not even fucking Darth Vader. I I, I was going to say something funny about Deadpool. I was going to say, well, I heard that Deadpool kills Papa Smurf, but he might. <laughs> he might. You never know in that <laughs> he movie. Might. He might. You can say could anything. Kill, could kill Darth Vader. Could kill Darth Vader, honestly. They oh. own everything now. Oh, Josh. Mm. Where do you come up with this stuff? Uh, well, that's all I got. You guys have anything? Joshy, oh, I had more Hayden Christensen news, but I'll save it for next oh, week. Oh boy, yeah. Aaron, any you got anything else? Yeah, yeah, I got a couple things. All right. Um, so Robert Downey Jr. revealed that he met with Christopher Christopher Nolan to play Scarecrow in Batman Begins, but got beat out by Cillian Murphy. That's Killian crazy. Murphy. Killian sorry. Murphy. Yeah, I did Holy see that shit. today. I forgot Can you to write imagine? Was he Iron Man yet? No. No. This was this was the movie came out in two thousand five. Yeah. Uh, so no, that's crazy. I want to see that movie. Fucking crazy. Yeah. Robert Downey Jr. is fucking scarecrow. I'd almost worry that he would take too much attention. Maybe, but again, he wasn't like back yet. You know what I mean? Yeah. He wasn't Iron Man yet. So, right. I mean, I'm sure he would have done great. Cillian Murphy but, yeah. was amazing though. He might have like, never been so Iron Man though if he was scarecrow. Probably not. Yeah. He probably mm. would have been too good in that yeah. role. Yeah. Uh, also, similar Marvel news, Paul Bettany confirms he's coming back as the Vision. Yeah. I don't know how many people are excited about that. No. I, 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 <laughs> well, liked, I, mean, I liked his Vision. They, they White Vision, though, right? Or what is he, what is he oh, going to I mean, I mean, he's, he's not going to stay be. White Vision. <laughs> That'd be Maybe funny. he might. He's just White Vision now. He might. He had to come back after what happened in that show. Wasn't there that Vision Quest show that was scheduled and then it got canceled, they I canceled think? It, yeah. Right. So I wonder what that's going to be. Yeah. 
Anything um, else? Uh, yeah, just one other fun thing. So Matthew Vaughn said uh, the studio for the Kingsman wanted him to cut that church scene, the crazy scene where oh, yeah. he goes uh, crazy and like just the everybody's best scene in the movie. The best scene of the movie <laughs> that they were going to cut that up until three days before the moon ca- movie came out. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, he has a new movie that's out right now, like Argyle or whatever. Mm. Argyle, I don't know. Argyle, yeah. Argyle. Um, saw the trailer and I was like, oh, maybe I'll go see it. Looked up the reviews. Oh boy, it's bad. It's mm. like really bad. Really, so many great actors, like fun actors, are in there. Yeah, movie. I know. Yeah. It looks like a fun movie, but it's out already. Yeah, it's out already, mm. and they bombed. It bombed so, at the box office. Yeah. Too bad. Isn't seen it in that one for a little bit? I think so. Yeah. I see, yeah. It's too bad. Like, yeah. I mean, his last movie wasn't very good either. The 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 third Kingsman movie was so awful. Like Josh and I watched it, and we were like so. Oh upset. yeah. Was oh, it a prequel or something? The yeah. King's That's right. Man. The King's Man. Oh, oh yeah. When rest. We huge. reviewed that on this show, and we were like, "This is one of the worst movies we've ever seen." Yes. So much. So much forced. Uh, forced love in that movie, I guess you could say. I mean, say. <laughs> like, everything that was a great about the first two Kingsman movies, they took away for the third one. So yeah, the yeah. first two were amazing. Yeah. Just so much fun. All right. Uh, well, last thing is uh, Carl Weathers died in his sleep last week at the age of 76. Hmm. Weathers was best known for playing Apollo Creed in the Rocky movies and for playing Chubbs in Happy, Happy Gilmore. I mean, that's, that's a lot of people love him as Chubbs, too, and... Yeah. So. Apollo Creed, man. One yeah. of my favorite things, memories of his, is uh, his uh, cameos in Arrested Development. I just loved it when he mm. played an acting coach. <laughs> okay, I never saw that. It's so, so much fun in that uh, in that show. Loved yeah. it. R.I.P. R.I.P. Good actor. I didn't realize that he was a linebacker. He was oh, a, he yeah, was a yeah. linebacker, a football linebacker first right. in the NFL. Remember his uh, cameo in Little Nicky? Where he plays Chubbs again, yeah. and he's in heaven. <laughs> and he's, oh. It's all in the hips. <laughs> oh, that hurts too much. Yeah, it was great. No, he was actually, you know, he's obviously most known for Apollo Creed, but yeah, he's he's a great actor. He was in a lot of different things, and uh, yeah, you know, for show. Sure. You son of a bitch. Yep. All right, on to X Men Apoc. Oh yeah, that's right, Dylan. You son, son of, of a, a bitch. bitch. <laughs> and predator. So it was that handshake was yeah. okay. It was him yeah. and Arnold. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing. Mandalorian. Yeah, yeah. He was, he was good. <gasps> that's right. Shit, he was a Mandalorian. Yep. Wow. I guess they're gonna have to find another actor. Or just never go back to or that never go planet. <laughs> Probably that's just fair. never. He wasn't that big. You know, what he I mean? was the governor or whatever in that world, right? Something like that. Something yeah. like that. Um, but all right, we can go to X Men Apocalypse, and this is the X Men movie that has the X Men music during the 20th Century Fox intro that I was talking about on the last show. You know, it was really yeah. cool. Yep. We start off with a voiceover from James McAvee about how some mutants' gifts can be a curse, and uh, we're in 3600 BC in Egypt where Apocalypse, played by Oscar Isaac, is dying of old age. And at this point, he's been around, like he's already been alive for tens of thousands of years doing this process over and over. Um, so they find a mutant who has a similar healing powers to someone we know. Yeah. yeah. Is, is this Wolverine? Was he alive this whole time? Oh. <laughs> um, he also has four followers who are also mutants. If and- they ever make a prequel, then I'll say yes. Yeah, He's definitely Wolverine. Right, right. <laughs> so he plans to transfer his consciousness into this guy's body so he can live forever. However, some rebels hate Apocalypse, and they figure out a way to collapse the pyramid from the inside. Some of the kills in this scene are pretty brutal. Though, oh, man. they are. But props to those guys. Very, very elaborate plan. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very yeah. well thought out plan. But like some of the like one mutant just folds a guy into a ball, oh. throws him. Uh, a couple others like turn to skeletons. It's it's a good scene. Yeah. All of his followers die, but the last one uses her powers to protect him while the uh, debris falls on him right before she's crushed to death. Boom. Rock just falls right on her fucking head. But yeah, cool intro to the movie. Fast forward to 1983. Scott Summers is in high school. And this is the first movie where Cyclops is not a douchebag. And I appreciated that. Because Cyclops was always my favorite X-Men. 
in the cartoons. Yeah. I just liked his uniform. I liked his superpower. Yeah. And then the fucking first three X-Men movies come back. He's just this whiny douchebag. Like, right. I hated Cyclops. Stay away from my woman. Yeah, that's, that's all it was. Thing. That was his yeah. whole thing. Don't fuck my girl. And then he even has the line like, what do you, uh, what do you prefer, yellow spandex? Yes! Yeah! <laughs> Like, what are you going to make a Batman movie and then he doesn't have the bat suit? Like, what the fuck? I got, I'm sorry to break it to you, Andrew, but Cyclops was kind of a fuck in the comics, too. The ones I read in the 90s, he was a douche. Well, I watched the cartoons. I didn't re really read the comics. I don't think it meant well, him so to be a I. douche in the comics, yeah. though. He was worse in the comics, I think. The, the X-Men cartoon, he was better. Mm -hmm. in, in the comics, though, he was kind of a douche. You know, it's I, I tend to just like the leaders... Uh, you know, because Leonardo's Leonardo. my favorite Tina, in, despite sure. everyone saying Leonardo's the worst one. Okay, yeah. he's got swords, though. Yeah, swords yeah. are cool. Yeah. I think I also just like the blue ones. Leonardo is, is the yeah. blue one. Cyclops is the blue one. Yeah. I think I just like the blue guy. B. Arthur was your favorite golden girl. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You like the head of the group. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. leader. Of course. Of course. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Scott She's made... a lot of people's favorites, though. Yeah, of, of course. Come on. I was a... I was a uh, a Blanche girl myself, uh -huh. but uh, it's just because she was the whore of the group. What's that, Josh? <laughs> no, I, I was just saying Scott. Scott definitely wasn't a douchebag in in this uh, movie. No, but his uh, his teacher definitely was a douchebag. Oh yeah. yeah, I mean he's a cool rebellious teenager. His teacher's talking about the events from Days of Future Past just to keep us, you know, current and up to date. And then Scott's eyes start burning, and one of the jocks thinks he's winking at his girlfriend. And uh, he's like, you winking at my girl? And he's like, your girl? Uh, I guess you do. You, you you look like you could be her father. It's a weird line. Yeah. I feel. Maybe it's like making fun of high school movies where <laughs> they cast 30-year-olds to play teenagers. Right. I don't know. But like, uh, he tells his teacher, like, oh, there's something wrong with my eyes. And she's like, okay, yeah, you can go. And make sure you go to the principal's office on your way there. It's like, yeah, what a bitch. Right, Josh? Yeah. So Scott goes to the bathroom, but the jock follows him, and the jock thinks that he's crying, but Scott opens his eyes and blasts the jock into the wall and Killing destroys him. most of the bathroom. Right? Well, no, they put the bathroom door was in front of the yeah. jock, and for so somehow that bathroom door didn't break, even though we see later in the film Scott can destroy a fucking tree. Right. <laughs> And that door is like a From tiny hundred yards away, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, they didn't want to show murder in yeah. the first episode. Scott but yeah, can't no. be killing other teenagers. He certainly should have squashed them. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Fuck that bully. Although in this movie, you can murder a fuck ton of people, and you're instantly forgiven as long as you make a cool X. You can't, we'll get there. We'll you get can't there. show <laughs> murder. You can't show murder. Right. That's right. Yeah. There's there's no people in those cars that Magneto is it's, sucking up into the sky. There's no people in those buildings in the middle of the day on a Monday. <laughs> <laughs> Every city looked like 9-11. Yeah, I know. Scene. God. So we go to Berlin where Raven goes to a fight club where they're forcing mutants to fight each other. And we see a new angel mutant. This is a third angel, I believe. A in third the angel. Yeah. Yes. And Angel defeats Blob. The mutant blob. It was just a little quick. Hey, look, that's blob. That's cool. Yeah. And then they dump Kurt Wagner, aka Nightcrawler, in the cage, and he doesn't want to fight. But Angel's like, "We have to, or else they'll kill both of us." And then Angel accidentally gets one of his wings electrocuted because there's electricity around the cages. Uh, meanwhile, Raven flirts with a guard and knocks him out to turn off the electricity. And then Angel flies away, and Raven helps Wagner escape. Her mm. son. <clears throat> but it's not canon. You know, not canon here. Not canon in these movies. Right. I was like, the whole movie, I'm waiting for that reveal to happen, and it, yeah. it never comes. Right. So I forgot, maybe Aaron knows because he's more of the comic person, but who did Mystique fuck so we got Nightcrawler? Who do you think? Who do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We I, said this already. Yeah. We said this. We already said it, but who do you think? I forgot. Who do you think? Like, just use your brain for two seconds. I don't think he can. Is there any other mutant that has those powers? And well, kind of looks like him, and looks just like him. No, no, no. But but he's dead. He has a fucking tail. He's de he's dead. Yeah, yeah. We don't know what uh, he died. Ah, uh, fuck. What was his name? Uh, Azazel. Yeah, Azazel. Hey, right. Yeah, yeah. You got one right. Oh, Remember, shit. she leaves to go with them at the no, end you're of first say class. Beast. That's no, right. But uh, right. But oh. again, he, it's not canon in these movies, so uh, it doesn't yeah. really matter. Yeah. Oh man. I know. Uh, so then we go to Poland. 
uh, where Eric Lenscher is working at a factory and he lives with his wife and daughter. Oh, nice, quiet life. Yeah. That's sweet. Uh oh. Eric sings his daughter a bedtime st- uh, song that he learned from his parents. And his daughter asks, What happened to your parents? And he says, They were taken from me as a little boy. And she says, Is something going to take you away from me? And he says, Never, never. <laughs> Damn, that's some heavy foreshadowing. Yeah. Heavy foreshadowing. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Alex, a.k.a. Havoc, is back, and he takes his younger brother, Scott, to Professor X's school for the gifted. And he's like, hey, this is where all the orphan kids go that yeah. parents give up on them. <laughs> yeah. And Scott's wearing a blindfold. He bumps into Jean Grey for a second and kind of is rude to her. Yeah. Then Hank McCoy walks up, and he and Alex have a mini reunion, and Hank is still... You know, in his human form, he's still ashamed of his uh, beast self, you know? Yeah. Uh, Charles ends the class early because he sees Alex walking towards the room. And Alex introduces Scott to Charles. And Charles shows Scott around and tells him to aim for a target ahead. Yeah. Uh, but Scott cuts down Charles's favorite tree. Almost kills half the students, too. Yeah. He didn't know it was going to be that crazy. Right. Yeah. I think that was my favorite tree. Does that mean I'm expelled? On the contrary. On the contrary. You're enrolled. So. Uh, back in Egypt, but current day Egypt, we have Agent Metaggart. She's back from first class. Yay. And she's responsible for all of the horrible things. <laughs> Everything bad that happens in this movie is her fault. Yeah. When you really think about it. Well, I mean, someone should have put, please close door behind you. <laughs> yeah. Right. She opened the uh, they didn't know. Yeah. Right. Wow, you're right. Yeah. Everything that followed was her fault. It's all her fault. Damn, these, you think that these... Charles would have wiped that out of her mind afterwards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but these guys that were praying and chanting, like they just never left the door open? I, I guess not. I can't believe well, all no, they, of these years what of the chanting. Stupid bitch. They go in at night, so they don't have to worry about it. it well, why were they there though. during the day then, this time? They've been there all night long, Brain. I, I don't know, Joe. Oh. Well, well, you, would think, think. you would think if they knew they would want to, you know, free him. Sure. If they knew that that was the, the case. Like, oh, we just need some fucking sun in here. Or this, this is the group that was passed down generation after generation. Like, go chant, stay down, you, <laughs> you bitch. Stay down there. <laughs> stay asleep, you evil fuck. <laughs> you will know what you do. Please. They, they were like, they just sing to him like, if you're waking up right now, go back to sleep, you powerful fuck. You killed my great great grandpa. Great 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 grandpa. It's just crazy to think about. No, great to the power of twelve. They had lights in there though. I guess he needed. Sun for photo, photosynthesis? Yeah. Photosynthesis? And make sure every bitch closes the door. <laughs> Wait, what? What's happening? <laughs> yeah, like, right. I, I, when the light hit, they should have been like, no, it's the sun. <laughs> and what was she doing? Looking for him? Like, what was she doing? I don't think they ever explained. She's just on assignment. So. I was looking for ruins. Anywhere on the planet. Right. When find. did she turn I, uh, into Laura Croft? They just Croft. told me to. They, <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I don't know. They just told me to, to shoot some Mil- Middle Eastern men. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. <laughs> oh, no. This guy looked extra beardy. So I was, <laughs> I was just beardy. following him. And he had a rug. And, uh, you know, I opened it yeah. up and there's a secret hole. So I had to right. go underneath. So Apocalypse wakes up and he immediately comes. He wakes up. He's like, oh, <sighs> oh. Wow, that was a great 5,000-year wet dream. (laughs) I had this dream I was fucking this hot bitch for five years. What happened? I I expelled 5,000 years of cum. His orgasm, like, causes earthquakes earthquakes all around the world. All around the world, yeah. And an earthquake in Berlin causes uh, problems at the factory. Some big machinery was about to crush a guy, so Eric saved him. And he hoped that no one saw him, but he fucking knew. Yeah. So he goes home, he tells his wife, you know, we have to leave. And he says this line that I feel they put in there to make, like, just to get, like, make Eric, like, still have, like, a, something good about him. Like, he goes, I told you the first day I met you who I was. <clears throat> like, just so that it's like, well, at least he never lied to his wife, right? 
Yes. So you think that was the opening line? He was buying her, buying her a beer, and he goes, "Hi, I'm I don't Magneto. Know. <laughs> I don't know if you know this. I'm Magneto." And she goes, "Oh, you killed so many Americans. It's so hot. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. This I is, use I metal mean, to murder. It is communist Poland at this point. So, oh, yeah. Well, yeah, that that tracks. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, he's like, we have to leave, but they can't find their daughter Nina. So they run into the woods where the police, the Polish police, are waiting for Eric, and they're holding his daughter. And he says, you're not wearing your badges. And one officer says, no medal. And he's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> That's when he knew. And how old is his daughter? Like six? Seven? Something like that, yeah. Like seven years has gone by since Days of Future Past, right? Oh, more than that. It's like 10 years. 10 years. Every movie is like 10 years. Right. That's right. Yeah, because it was 63, 73, And they're and still 83. worried about this guy? Yeah. Ugh. It's the anniversary of his big speech. That's like, that's the whole thing. I don't get like mutants were outed yet. They're all still hiding. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So they accuse him of being Magneto, and he agrees to go with the police, and they let his daughter go. However, his daughter cries and screams, I'm not going to let them take you away. And it's very similar to when Eric's parents were taken from him. Uh, uh, she uses her powers without knowing, you know, the birds in the forest start attacking the police. And one officer holding a bow and arrow yeah. accidentally lets go. Derp. And shoots Eric's wife and daughter. Oh. One arrow, <clears throat> two ladies. And they die in his arms. <clears throat> yep. So Eric takes off the uh, his wife's necklace and kills the police with it, flying it through all of their necks. Fucking look like Yondu. Just with the, when oh, he had yeah. that whistle. I yeah, was yeah. like, holy shit, that was amazing. Right. So cool. And then he looks up and yells, is this what you want from me? Is this what I am? Very heartbreaking scene. Everywhere I look said that was improvised, which is you're just like... Really? They cut to him and he screams it, so I can't imagine that, but everybody's saying it. Oh. Maybe Like he was just supposed to cry there. Like turning the director, is this what you want? We've done a hundred <laughs> takes. <laughs> That's the one. Here I we mean, go. he's an amazing actor. Oh, okay. yeah. You know? Uh, back to the school, the kids are frightened by Jean having a nightmare. Uh, Charles eventually wakes her up and she says, I saw the end of the world. And Charles is like, it was, it was just a dream. And she's like, no, it, it, was, it felt real. She says, you don't know what it's like to be trapped inside your own head. And he's like, oh, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> and she says, I'm afraid one day I'm going to hurt someone. He's like, oh, yes, many people. Yes. Hundreds, thousands, thousands of people. You're going to hurt. You're going to kill me. You're going to explode me from within. Wait, no, that doesn't count anymore. That's not canon anymore because we changed the future in the last movie. Uh, so then Charles uses uh, Cerebro and he's pleased to find McTaggart in Egypt. He's like, oh, she looks amazing. She's barely aged a day. Just like all of us have barely aged a day. Right. In 20 years. In 20 years. <laughs> yeah. So Charles and Alex uh, visit her back at her office and Charles tells Alex that he wiped her memory. And so she doesn't remember him or anything that happened in first class. Mm. But that's not really what happened in first class. At the end of first class, she says, like, sometimes I get fragments. And she even, like, mentions the kiss. Unless we're supposed to believe that, like, the memories would fade more as time went on. I don't know. But it's a little bit of, like, a, hmm. Right. She remembered the kiss, though, at the end of first class. So I don't know. Yeah. Maybe he went back and... I think we joked about that after first class that he right. kept rewiping her. He like visits he would, her every six months. He would come back, oh, give God. her memories back, fuck her, and then wipe her again. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Maybe he did that. Wow. Uh, so McTaggart tells Charles that she's read all of his papers, and she tells uh, she tells them about Apocalypse, who is believed to be the world's first mutant. And she also said Apocalypse always had four followers, and. Alex, this is the great line from the trailer where he's like the four horsemen of the apocalypse. He got that from the Bible. And then she's like, or the Bible got it from him. Ooh, bam, bam. It's like, yeah, I mean, he's he's older than the Bible. Which yeah. One? Well, the Bible got it from him. Yeah. Yeah. Big line. Absolutely. So then uh, Apocalypse starts walking around uh, Egypt and he sees a teenage storm. Uh, using her powers, blowing some wind around to cause a distraction, steal some money. But they see her and they corner her in an alley. However, Apocalypse follows them. And one guy threatens Apocalypse with a knife, but he decapitates three other men. And the guy immediately apologizes. 
And then Apocalypse just pushes, like, forces him into a wall. Damn. Becomes part of the wall. He's one with the wall now. That's yeah. a terrible way to go out. Oh, yeah. Sure. But fucking amazing. Yeah. Storm then takes Apocalypse to her home, and he sees a photo of uh, Mystique on the wall, and she tells him that, you know, she's my hero. And then Apocalypse uh, puts his hand on her television to learn English and everything in the world, like nuclear weapons and all that shit. He also sees Eric Lencher's big speech from Days of Future Past. Yep. And then he tells Storm, uh, this world needs to be saved. Yeah. <clears throat> Like before that, what did he say? Destroyed or cleansed? Something? Oh, cleansed, yeah. right? In a different language. In a, diff- in, like, in a different language, he goes, "Huh?" And he goes, "Saved." Oh, yeah. that's right. <laughs> I speak English. Yeah, yeah. Saved. Uh, Apocalypse then uses his powers to enhance Storm's powers and to give her white hair because I guess he just thinks she looks hotter like that. Right. You look hotter. I need you He's to look wrong. older because you're sixteen in this hair. movie. Yeah. <laughs> I dreamed of you for five thousand years. Uh, meanwhile, Raven brings Kurt Wagner to Caliban. If you remember him from, he was also in Logan, different actor, but yep. same mutant. And uh, this is where we meet the worst uh, person in this movie, Olivia Munn. Oh. Oh, which God. this is just like January Jones in first class. Like January Jones was terrible in first class. and She was terrible, but very attractive. Very sure. attractive. Yeah, sure. So is Olivia Munn. Her, her, her Psylocke uh, cosplay was on point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whoa. So she protects Caliban and she, yeah, she's Psylocke, but she sucks. And then Caliban tells Raven about Eric losing his wife and daughter. Uh, back at the school, Hank makes special glasses for Scott so he can open his eyes without murdering everyone. And then Scott sees Gene for the first time and he's instantly hard. Yeah. <laughs> hard. <laughs> you were like, oh, I hated you, but now that I see, see how you. hard you are, you're, I'm in love with you. You're awesome. I'll hit uh, on you now. He starts to flirt with Jean, and she's like, well, you're not the biggest freak in the school. And he's like, oh, that's a change. And then Raven brings Kurt to the school and uh, talks to Hank. And there's a joke about neither of them being blue. But then Kurt's like, I'm blue. You know? Yeah. Guys, Kurt had these, like, really weird moments throughout the movie. But it, he popped up in, like, the most random yeah, places. Yeah, he, he had a few good funny it's scenes. pretty funny. <laughs> Uh, so then uh, Apocalypse and Storm visit Caliban looking for mutants, and Caliban points a gun at Apocalypse, but Apocalypse turns it to dust. And then Olivia Munn or Psylocke pulls out her purple lightsaber, <laughs> and she's like, what do you want? And Apocalypse says, I want you to feel the full reach of your powers. And he makes her stronger, and she says, I know the kind of mutants you're looking for. So they go and find Angel. This guy can fly. Yeah. And, and, and like, fly. And that's not anymore, though, really. No. One of his wings are fucked, and he's drunk. But then Apocalypse gives Angel some metal wings that shoot metal, and he joins the team. Yeah, there you go. So, so now welcome. he's Archangel. Yeah. Archangel. Right. Uh, except Lamer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cooler name. What do you think about it? Already. They've done Angel three times, and every time they're, they've been pretty lame. Right. You know, this was good though because in the comics it was Apocalypse that turned Angel into Archangel, giving well, him the metal okay. wings and shit. Very yeah. cool. Back at the school, uh, Scott wants to sneak out and go to the mall, and Kurt Wagner's like, "I want to go to the mall. Try it." You know, he has no idea what a mall is. And then, hey, look, it's Jubilee. Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, it's a very I, random cameo. <laughs> I wanted to see some fireworks or something. Whatever. Yeah. Whatever right. her powers are. That's it. Being happy is that her power? Yeah. Happy and sparklers, I guess. Whatever. Yeah. 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 Uh, then Hank shows Raven uh, their new sweet jet that like Hank made brick by brick. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. He just made it there. Yeah. And like, I, I made this last like a model airplane. Like I just made that. Yeah. And no metal jet. apparently. It's really smart. No War metal jet. at all on the plane. No all, metal? Car- all, all carbon fiber. Is that what he said? No, I'm just saying because oh. Magneto can't control it. Well, he never had the chance to. He was controlling all the other metal in the world. They never used that plane. Uh, 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 all right. Oh. Uh, so, yeah, Hank says he was hoping to restart the X-Men, but Raven's like, uh, Charles wants students, not soldiers. And Hank's yeah. like, well, maybe now that you're back. And she goes, I'm here about Eric. I think he might be in trouble. And Hank's like, isn't he always? Yeah. Yeah, why do they keep giving this guy fourth and fifth chances? Nice guys finish last, <laughs> God damn it! Right. They even cut me fucking you from the last movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's bullshit. So then Eric goes right. back 
to the factory and he's about to kill all of his co-workers one guy's like please henrik which was his fake name yeah and he goes my name isn't henrik it's magneto but then apocalypse pops in with his followers they can just teleport anywhere too and eric turns around and he goes who the fuck are you yeah and that's just like all three movies they the use the F. fuck they get the one fuck he says don't try to stop me from killing these men and then Apocalypse just buries the men in the floor beneath them. <laughs> you mean these men? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. If you're Magneto, you're like, you, you robbed me of my vengeance, bro. That's yeah, true. Right? I wanted to kill them all, rip them all apart. Yeah. Oh. So Apocalypse says, I'm not here for them. I'm here for you. And Apocalypse takes Eric to Auschwitz, where Eric's parents were killed and where he first discovered his powers. And Apocalypse tells Eric, uh, you don't know your own strength, but I do. Reach into the ground, you'll find you have the power to move the very earth itself. And so Eric uses his powers and starts destroying Auschwitz while Apocalypse uh, yells, everything they built will fall, and through the ashes of their world, we'll build a better one. Yeah, powerful stuff. Yeah. Uh, then we uh, see Peter, a.k.a. Quicksilver, a.k.a. everyone's favorite part of okay. Days of Future Past. Both of these movies, really. If favorite part of all X Men movies ever, maybe. I right. mean, how have we not gotten a Quicksilver standalone movie? I mean, he's amazing. Yeah. You know, I'll tell he's you why great. later. Oh, all right. Yeah, because it takes two fucking months to film the three minutes that we see. In That's this true. Movie. That's true. So, uh, yeah, Quicksilver was watching the news about Eric, his father, and his mom tells him this won't end well. He says, "I'm not afraid of him," but she says, "You should be." He should be. Yeah, she's right. Uh, then Scott and the other kids leave the movie theater after seeing Return of the Jedi. And that's, you know, yeah, the third movie is always the worst line, whatever. Uh, Raven tells Charles that the world still hates mutants. And Charles says, uh, that's why you're not in your natural blue form. Or is it because you've become too famous and you can't be blue the whole movie? <laughs> yeah. Is that why? Uh, and then Raven also tells Charles about Eric. So he uses Cerebro. Mm. Uh, then we cut to Eric. He's watching Apocalypse, like giving Angel some more powers or armor or some shit. Yeah. And then he just like, all of a sudden he just looks up and he like senses something. He walks away and he's like, Charles? Charles. Like, just that was awesome. Yep. <clears throat> and uh, Charles gives Eric his condolences for his family, uh, asks him to come, you know, he's like, come to me, I can help you. And Eric says, I tried it your way, Charles. It always ends the same way. They took everything away from me. Now we'll take everything from them. Eesh. And Apocalypse notices what's going on. He says, extraordinary. Angel's like, what do you see? Apocalypse says, the answer. Thank you for letting me in. Ugh. And Charles freaks out. His eyes turn black. Yeah. And then Apocalypse takes over Cerebro. We get this montage of him forcing people to send all the nukes into space. Yeah, I guess he's like... uh, I want to kill everyone, yeah. not, not them. Right. He also has uh, the submarines destroy each other. We get a little cameo of Stan Lee watching the nukes go up in the air. It's like the end of Oppenheimer. Yeah. By the way, there was this one really good line when Charles first started talking to Magneto, and he did the old, you know, what would your family want? What would your wife and kids? And he said, they'd want to live. Yeah. It's like, oh. It's a really good. Rough. Yeah. It's yeah. a really good line. It's a good vengeance line. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so then Charles tells Alex to destroy Cerebro. He's like, he just yells, wreak havoc. And Alex just starts blasting everywhere. Another line that apparently was improvised, according to IMDb. Really? Yeah. Man. Like the perfect line. So the writer just wasn't <laughs> that good. I mean, yeah, how do you... Wreak havoc. When you, yeah, it's like lines like that. You think, how could you not have that in there? Yeah. Yeah. So Apocalypse and his four horsemen teleport to the school... Magneto force pulls Charles to him, and then Alex uh, blasts towards them, but they teleport away. And, and then Alex, Hank's like, no! Yeah, Alex, like, shoots, like, I guess the generator that was in the room, and uh, the house starts to explode. However, Quicksilver walks up and saves everyone in terrific fashion while we listen to Sweet Dreams oh, are made of, of these. Mm -mm, and it's mm -mm, like mm -mm, mm -mm. the fact that they outdid the scene how, from days of future past how could they have and they did like it's like okay how can we make this better and it's like well you did this is better you saved all these children fucking yeah. grand slam from grand being slam killed yeah and like everyone right right as they're about to just explode into nothing 
It's so great. Just he's so funny. And every little thing he and, does in there, like yeah. trying to kiss McTaggart or uh, licking yeah. his hands and pushing the kid's hair up. He, he moonwalks into one room at yeah. one point. He holds a dart. Yeah. <laughs> and he saved like half of them by just fucking throwing them out the window. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. He attaches sheets to the trees that they hit the sheets. Yeah. yeah. So awesome. Uh, so then Peter grabs the last two students. He jumps out the window. Raven turns blue on instinct and Hank tells her the students look up to you. And she's like, fuck that. She's like, yeah, fuck that. No, I'm Jennifer fucking Lawrence. Yep. I only agreed to be in this in the blue paint for like two days. Well, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, More about that later. Uh, yeah. So then Scott and friends drive up. Scott looks for Alex, but Alex was the only one Peter didn't save oh. as he was closest to the blast. So sad. Ouch. Yeah. So then Gene senses something and William Stryker shows up with his team. and Just randomly? Yeah. Good timing. Yeah. They're all just outside. Well, it's because he, yeah, I guess they knew where <laughs> Professor X was, right? And they were, you know. So that gun that they use, pretty effective, right? Yeah, his men just have some weapon that knocks everyone out. But right. he doesn't have it anywhere else? <laughs> you think he would have had it at his secret prison, maybe? Yeah, no shit. <laughs> the, only, the only problem I have with this part was, well, certainly Peter would just run away. Right. You know you what I mean? You see pause in the air as it's starting to go up. Cause, yeah, because you think about Peter, even when he talks to someone, he must be so fucking bored. Because they're like, hey. <laughs> you think he's always in a state of fast? What <laughs> are you? Like, it's even slower than that. Yeah. Oh, God, can you imagine what sex is like for that guy? <laughs> oh, <Holy> man. <laughs> oh, you're done? <laughs> yeah. Did you come even, yet? Even yeah. quicker than that. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. So he's, yeah, like that, like he obviously wouldn't be knocked out. He could run faster than that fucking blast can even go off. Right. You know? But all right, I get it. Fine. You still want him in the movie, and we all do. Uh, then Stryker takes, he takes, uh, he takes McTaggart, Hank, Peter, and Mystique. Uh, Jean uses her powers to make her, Scott, and Kurt invisible to a guard. And then Scott tells Kurt, like, hey, get us in that helicopter. So Kurt teleports them. However, as soon as they get in the helicopter, Scott's like, Kurt, get us out of here now. <laughs> I think he wanted to get everyone out of there. So including, you know. Yeah. And then, like, none of their powers work in a helicopter because there's some sort of fucking force field. Yeah. Mute, <laughs> like, yeah, no mutant powers work. Uh, so then Scott cries for his brother, but Gene says, uh, you know, Alex felt like you were going to make a difference in the world. He says, how do you know what he felt? And then she's like, I know what everyone feels. Mm. Like in like a sad way, like she's upset about it, you know? Like a sexual way. Wait, what? Then, what? She grabs his hand. She grabs his hand, yeah. Right. Uh, then McTavert, Ray, uh, Raven, Hank, and Peter wake up in a cell at Stryker's base and... Uh, Hank turned into Beast, and Peter screams. He's like, is that going to happen of all, to all of us? <laughs> uh, then Stryker asks about what Charles did to... But, like, Peter saw Hank in the last movie and knows who he is. Or did he never become he never Beast? Saw he did become beast. beast. Not in front of Peter. Never? No. Oh, I guess not, yeah. But also, if he saw the D what happened in DC on the news, then I guess he should have. Yeah. Right. But just on TV. Uh, so Stryker asks about what Charles did to put all the nukes in the air, but McTaggart said it was someone more powerful than Charles. And Peter tells... Yeah. You know who it cuts to after she says that? Hmm. Jean Grey. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 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 Clever, yeah. Clever. yeah. 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 Uh, then Peter tells Raven that Eric's his father. He's like, me and my mom, they... And she's like, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, He's about to, like, do, like... This yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, then Charles wakes up, and Apocalypse has blocked his mind with his powers... And Charles tells Eric, you know, I told you there's good in you. But Eric says, whatever you thought you saw in me, I buried it with my family. Mm. Jesus. So then Apocalypse. Hardcore. Apocalypse enhances Charles' powers uh, to deliver a message to the world that he's their new god. And Charles relays the message, but gives Gene a hidden message. Mm. He's like, Gene, Gene, Gene. Find us, find us, find us. Yeah. Gene, Gene. Uh, Charles ends the message. Apocalypse says, like, those with the greatest powers, uh, this world is yours. But Charles changes it to, you know, those with the greatest powers, protect those without. Mm. And then he just, like, looks at Apocalypse he's like, that's my message to the world. And uh, we get a little uh, very subtle X-Men music. When he says that, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, back to Stryker's base. Scott, Gene, and Kurt hear someone in a cell. And Scott's like, oh, there's an animal in there. Uh-oh. Gene's like, oh, that's no animal. Uh, a wolverine? Mm-hmm. Uh, uh. He just, he, uh, just, he just ruined uh, it. Yeah, that's good. He just no, ruined uh, it. It's uh, no animal. No animal. And then you say Wolverine. Like, doesn't even make sense. But thanks, Josh. All right. Let's pretend, let's pretend Josh didn't just ruin it. All right. right? All, right all right. So some guards over. walk in. They hide. And then Gene opens the cell. And you know who's in there? The motherfucking Wolverine. Oh, that's who. Oh, shit. <laughs> An Boom. animal? Yeah. Bust a uh, nut. Bust a nut. Uh, uh, I mean, for God's sakes. I came. It's all of these. Uh, Wasn't this given away in the trailer uh, too? I think in the last trailer. It, it, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was like, "You couldn't have saved this." Oh no, we need to make sure they didn't Hugh show him. They didn't show him, but they did in a way where it's like, "Oh, you know, he's gonna be in it." Yeah, and yeah. it's it's so fun because we just got a whole movie with him. The last movie. Yeah, and it was this exciting seeing him. Like, oh my god. Yeah. So I guess Mystique didn't save him from Stryker after all. Yeah, that's a shame. I don't know. <laughs> oh, I guess Man, that's no. what they were going for, though. I promise you. I guess Mystique delivered him to Stryker. Hmm. This was just Fox saying, "Like, look, we need Hugh Jackman in the fucking movie." All right. It's see, it's funny you say that because I always took that scene as she was making sure he got to Stryker. That's so what I. He me could, too. We so mentioned he could that become Wolverine yeah. and get his claws. Me too. The director Brian Singer said the opposite of that. Yeah, he was like, "Yeah, it's that she saved him." But then Fox is like, he needs to be in the fucking movie, so fuck that. He's we got a lot more Wolverine to do. He can't have bones coming out of his hands. Right. <laughs> exactly. We we saved him, and then Stryker just found him eventually. Yeah, exactly. Himself. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. It was, I think in, even like, I think even the director said like, yeah, some things are inevitable, I guess. Like. Because he was forced to put uh, yeah. put him in Studi- there. A studios bro, right? <laughs> but it's funny. As a kid, I had that action figure of Wolverine, like with the helmet on him and all That's that crazy. shit going into him. Yeah. I had that because uh, it was in the cartoon as well, that part. So Wolverine brutally murders all of Stryker's men. Oh, yeah. The shot of Logan looking into the security camera while he stabs that one guard to death. And then they cut like he's looking right at Stryker. And Stryker's just like shitting himself, and he's like, "Oh fuck, I'll be right back." Yeah, and he and he bails. <laughs> he's out. You guys stay here. I'll be back. Well, yeah. he needs someone for Wolverine to kill while he's running away. Exactly. This really had shades of X two when he was just stabbing and killing. Oh and yeah. fucking up. So good. Absolutely. So Logan then was about to attack Scott, but Jean gets in his head. She takes off Logan's uh, headgear and gives him some of his memories back, and then Logan like pulls out the fucking wires that were jammed into his body and he runs out the door and Scott's like, Oh, it's probably the last we'll see of him. Yep. 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 Not. <laughs> uh, then Scott, Gene and Kurt free everyone else. Uh, another Kurt, uh, funny Kurt Wagner line where he's like on three, ready? He's like one, two. And he's like, uh. <laughs> I'd only have two. So is that the first time in his life he's ever counted to three? Yeah. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> or at least did it with his fingers. Right. Uh, so they find a war plane and some flight suits, and and Raven's like, let's go to war. And then on the plane, Raven tells the students about her first mission. She says, uh, but then she says, Hank and I are the only ones left. And they're like, oh, yeah, uh, okay. We're all going to die. And she's like, yeah, see, I'm not a hero. I couldn't save them. And then Jean says, you're a hero to us. Seeing you on TV that day in D.C. changed my life. And everyone's like, yeah, 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 same here. Uh, so then Apocalypse makes Eric's old helmet for him. And Eric starts pulling up all the metal for from the entire world. The entire world. <laughs> Again, killing millions. Millions. We just see buildings just going up into the sky. Yeah. Holy shit. Apocalypse then wants uh, Charles's powers. So he starts to transfer his consciousness into Charles's body. The X-Men show up and Raven turns into Mystique to inspire the young ones. Uh, Kurt goes into the pyramid to try to find Charles, but Angel follows him. Uh, Storm and Psylocke fight Cyclops, Gene, and Beast. Uh, Peter takes Mystique to where Eric is, but there's a magnetic barrier there. Uh, Mystique tells Eric, you know, you still have family. There's me. There's Charles. And and then and then Peter, do you want to Peter? Do you want to say anything, Peter? This is your chance, Peter. It's your one fucking chance to save the world. All right, no pressure. I. Have family too. 
It's the worst line of the whole movie. Ugh. Papa? He even Papa? says it like that. Just like that. I got Terrible. family too. <laughs> so. Jesus. I'm guessing the reason why they didn't have him tell him is they wanted Eric to like decide, you know what I mean? To make the right decision without knowing, without it's, his knowing it's his son. Like, well, I just did this because I guess I, I came in that girl and then that guy came. But that would have made the moment mean so much more when he like when he realizes that's his son and that's what gets him. I agree with that. That would have meant so much more. Sure. Right. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I'm your son too. <laughs> uh, even though I, I'm only seven years younger than you in real life. I I I me too. <laughs> <laughs> it's that bad. The yeah. What, uh, and what of you? What, what do you care about? Wait, right. Why are you asking a guy you don't know? Duh, I care about nothing. Yeah. Nothing at all. I just don't like metal. What? Don't fuck my mom. What? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so then Charles goes... <laughs> no. Martha. Mar why would you say that? <laughs> <laughs> don't fuck my mom. No! What's, what's her name? Martha. Why would you say that name? <laughs> oh, God, no. Uh, so Charles goes bald during the transfer process. Kurt defeats Angel, and he saves the professor before the transfer is complete. Uh, Kurt teleports everyone back to the plane except for Peter and Raven. Apocalypse wakes up, and he's pissed. He screams like a fucking animal. And then Angel and Psylocke destroy the plane, so Kurt teleports all of them back to the ground. Meanwhile, Psylocke uses her lightsaber to, like, gently slide down a building, and it's like, okay, sure. Okay. Okay. Sure, uh, and then the guy with wings, gets the guy that the can plane. fly, crashes with the plane and Correct. dies. He had metal wings. Yeah, uh, and it's like as soon as like they all get they all like vanish out of the plane, yeah. and like you see his just face, angels left, and, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> so true. <laughs> it's like get out, stop going, and get the fuck out of there. Yeah, you have <laughs> metal wings, then he yeah. explodes. <laughs> I guess you can't kill the pretty girl, maybe? Whatever. I don't know. I mean, they must have had plans for her after this. Because she did send her off have. like the Incredible to Hulk. To do something else. But, yeah. like, how did they not know she's this terrible actress? Psylocke <gasps> is, the like, one of the leaders of X-Force, right? In the comics? Um, maybe. You. I mean, really, her main thing was just being hot. She never really had a notable power. No. You know, the little purple blades. Whatever. You yeah. want a little uh, fun fact? Go. Remember uh, the G4 channel? G4 Remember Attack channel? of the Show? Yeah. She hosted Attack of the Show. Oh, right. right. That was like their Tosh.0 type thing. Yes. So I made those Spider-Man oh, cartoon yeah. parodies. One of them got was played on Attack of the Show, oh. and it was Olivia Munn. I remember like, that. Here's this. Look at this. Yeah. And then it She's was like, whoever it, made that, I would suck his cock. Yeah. Uh, and coincidentally, <laughs> that the one that the one that got on that show was an X-Men one. Yeah, it was when the X Men were in Spider Man, and That's it was right. that right. It was yeah. the one I did where Professor X is uh, reading everyone's mind, <laughs> and he's like, "Show me your titties, Firestar." That's right. And she's like, "You're not reading my mind." He's like, "I read everyone else's mind, <laughs> <laughs> and my mind too." And then at the end, he like put, he's like, uh, "Forget it. I now have the image of your boobies in my mind. I'm transferring the image to all of you." And then they're like, "What?" And then Spider Man's like, "Amazing, yeah. <laughs> Spider Man." Um, you got to bring back those Spider-Mans. Those are so, so funny. So then after that, uh, Olivia Mum was like, super boobies, super boobies, or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah, it was cool. Yeah. But she sucked in this movie. I, You know, I, <laughs> I recently thought about... Do you think she showed Aaron Rodgers? Uh, she what? Do you think she showed Aaron Rodgers? Show, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> that was way before him, but yeah. That's yeah. Um, no, I've thought about doing another one of those. Maybe I will. It's been a long time. Uh, where the fuck are we? Yeah. Raven then tells Eric, I'm going to fight for what I have left. Are you? Raven leaves, and then Eric remembers a conversation with Charles from first class about joining the team, like before there even was an X-Men. Yeah. Uh, then Apocalypse tar uh, talks to Charles in his head because they're still connected. And then Peter just walks up to Apocalypse, like laughs, and this just starts punching him. Yeah. Running circles around him, literally. But then, and it was like, you know, a cute little 10 seconds or whatever, but Apocalypse uses his powers to stop him. And then, uh, yeah. 
it was a really cool scene where he starts like adjusting and then it's like, oh shit, where he's able to track him and see yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. And I'm pretty sure they copied this in um, Dawn of Justice where uh, Flash oh, is running they around. did. Where Flash <laughs> is running around and Superman is able to slow down and catch. Yeah. yeah and it's yeah, like, yeah. oh fuck, he sees him. That's right. true. Wow. Like, the one cool thing about that movie you just <laughs> they copied. ruined because they copied it. No, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, Apocalypse grabs Peter. He tells Psylocke to kill him. He's like, end him. But then she slices Apocalypse's neck. But it Face heals. Turn? Yeah, no. Oh. It heals immediately because he got Logan's powers from the opening scene. And then Apocalypse grabs her by the throat and she turns into Raven. Oh, shit. And then Charles goes inside uh, Apocalypse's head, and he's like, thank you for letting me in. He's like, wait, if you can get in my head, I can yeah. get in your head. Right. So they have a fist fight in their minds. In my mind. And all of a sudden, they're, like, fighting in, you know, Charles's house. He's like, you're in my house now. But then Apocalypse catches his fist and says, you'll need a bigger house. And Apocalypse finds where Charles is, and he starts walking to him. But then two giant pieces of metal form an X in front of him, mm. and it's Magneto. <laughs> Shit. Face turn. Face turn. Yeah. Apocalypse says, you betrayed me? And Magneto says, no, I betrayed them. And he just starts throwing all the metal he got from the world. He starts throwing it at Apocalypse. Yep. Including, like, humans that were in those cars. <laughs> <laughs> that had a little metal on them. Yeah. Uh, then the Cyclops shoots his laser eyes at Apocalypse, and... Apocalypse, meanwhile, still beating the shit out of Charles in their mind fight. And now it looked, now they're like in the basement of the school where all the X-Men shit is. Yep. And then uh, Apocalypse forces Scott into a wall. Charles is crying out for Jean. And then Apocalypse tells Charles, It's over, Charles. You're finished. You're finished. And Charles says, You will never win. Why is that? Because you are alone. And I am not. Oh, that's so good. And then Gene walks through the X Men doors. Ooh, ooh. So fucking good. Ooh, Charles says, bumps. "Gene, let go, Gene." And in reality, and in their minds, Gene walks towards Apocalypse. And in reality, she's walking through the air. Yeah, where it starts, the music starts going. Diddly, 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 yeah. diddly, diddly. She's like walking on the sky. Yeah. So Gene screams as she turns to Phoenix and Well the that you missed that part where he's just yeah. like Gene let go Gene Yeah Let go and like yeah. oh my god and then she just fucking bruh, ah! destroys oh Apocalypse's barrier it's so fucking good uh Cyclops starts shooting at him again the metal's like going through him and yeah they they think they've got him but then he makes another barrier and Beast is like, he's going to escape. He's getting away. But then Storm joins in, and she uses her lightning to remove the barrier. Wow. Faced her. Yeah. And again, like, this is really the first movie where, like, Cyclops actually fucking uses his powers for something important. And Storm uses her powers for something important. Of course. Well, yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Like, it's this yeah. ultimate team moment where everyone's doing something yeah. to defeat someone. Yeah, it took right. every single person to defeat Apocalypse. And it just goes... Because Apocalypse was one of the most powerful X-Men villains. So, you right. know, it was kind of nice there's an to outtake see that. where she turns to them, um, Storm, and she goes... You know what happens to Apocalypse when they... No, no like, shut up! Just no, shut the fuck up! Him. No. Just get him! No! Shut the fuck up. God, we don't care! Jesus! Hopefully he'll get struck by lightning! Yeah. Hit him! No, you're supposed to be the cool version of Storm. Don't say that. <laughs> that's what Apocalypse... That's his humor. I don't know what to tell you guys. Right. See, Apocalypse says all is revealed, and then he turns to dust. Oof. And I think, like, he said all is revealed by, like, oh, oh, yeah, she's the more powerful one. All is revealed. She's going to kill us all. Yeah, right. And, of course, she's in this glowing, fiery phoenix. Yeah. The image. It's yep. amazing. So then Gene wakes up Charles. McTaggart asks him, do you know where you are? And he says, I'm on a beach in Cuba with you. Oh, boy. And he gives her back the memories, including their kiss. Yeah. And he's like, I'm sorry I took those from you. Mm -hmm. And she just smiles like, I'm not mad at you. Even She's all the crying. times that... Like, you are the most toxic boyfriend yeah. well, there is. <laughs> they fell in love. Imagine, like, you didn't have that love, and all of a sudden it returns to your mind right. in one second. It's yeah. like, that do was you, powerful. 
Do you think that he gave back all the times that he would go over to her house, like in the middle of the no, night? No, 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 no. Just like the, that? no, just Cuba. Just no, Cuba. Just, just so <laughs> not the five hundred booty calls. No. Okay. All no. Right. Then Kurt wakes up. He's like, ah! Yeah. You're like, oh, what did I miss? Yeah. I, I got knocked out earlier by Apocalypse, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So then Gene and Eric use their powers to rebuild the mansion. Just the two of them. Yeah. Um, what did you say earlier? Oh, that's not up to code. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The inspector comes in. He's like, this whole building's about to fall apart. But they're like 100 yards from the house. It's like they can, they know where to put the nails to, I guess. <clears throat> Just everything. That oh, it was like uh, Invincible when uh, Adam Eve tried to put, put together the apartment complex and it all broke apart. <laughs> and all the right. dad was like, you shouldn't be doing that. You don't know what you're doing. Right. Well, then in the first uh, Deadpool movie... Colossus is like, why won't Deadpool see benefit of becoming X Men? And then Negasonic Teenage Warhead's like, what's that? The uh, the house that explodes every few years? It's like, <laughs> oh please, house blowing up builds character. It's <laughs> <laughs> great. Uh, so yeah, uh, Storm and Peter decide to join the school. Sometime later, Eric and Charles have one last talk. Charles says, I was right about Raven. I was even right about you. Just kidding. You're going to jail. We have officers, please. <laughs> Plastic Directly officers. Directly to jail. You killed millions, Eric. <laughs> Eric! <laughs> right. I mean, you're, you're 100% right. He has the opportunity to shut him down all yeah. the time. Right. Yeah, just shut him down, dude. There's no way you're going to do this again in 10 years, yeah. please. Every 10 years, you lose your mind, Eric. Let For, me help you. Fourth time's a job? Yeah. I mean... Eric, how about you stay for a month and let me fix the psychotic, psychopath right. part of your brain? Yeah, seriously. <laughs> Until next murder spree, old friend. Yeah, exactly. So then Eric asks him, doesn't it ever wake you up in the middle of the night, the feeling that they'll come for you and your children? And Charles says, it indeed does. He says, what do you do in that moment? And... Charles says, I feel a great pity for the poor soul coming to my school looking for trouble. Mm. And then Eric's like, Eric just nods his head like, that's more fucking like it. Man. Yeah, right. You know, that's, And that's really the first time in all of these three movies where he actually shows the first sliver of, well, maybe we should fuck people up. Yeah. <laughs> like, maybe right. we should fuck up humans if they come for us. Yeah, right. And just good to see Eric be like, okay, you finally get it. That's cool. Yeah. But I think... I'm pretty sure Patrick Stewart says that line in the first movie. I think he says yeah. that, like, I feel pity for the poor soul coming to my school looking for trouble. Right. I'm pretty sure. So then, all of a sudden, we're in the danger room. And I believe this is only the second time they've ever been in the danger room in all these fucking X-Men movies. Yeah, because the second one ended with this, or started with this scene, right? What? X2 started with them in the training. Room. I think it was X3, right? Or X3. X3, yeah. Yeah. Cuz X3, X3 the movie starts and it's like in the, the like there's a subtitle that reads like in the near future. Mm. And like the world is destroyed. But then it's just like, oh no, that was just the danger room training thing. Yeah, and it was yeah, like yeah. so the training room even says in the near future. <laughs> like so weird. But the fact that this is like the second time we get the danger room. And Mystique tells Scott, Kurt, Gene, Storm, and Peter, she's like, you're not students anymore. Forget everything you learned. None of that matters. They're all X-Men. And for the first time in I don't know how many movies, let me see, three, four, five, six, seven. <laughs> I think this is like the eighth X-Men movie. It took eight X-Men movies for to put finally put them in their fucking costumes yeah. from the comics and the cartoons. Cyclops is in his fucking costume. Blue with the yellow X. Oh my God, he looks amazing. They're oh, yeah. all, cur uh, Nightcrawler's in the fucking, is in his black and red costume. Like, And we've got Raven full face turn on yeah. the X-Men now. Yes, it's so awesome. So then the satisfying. Sentinels from Days of Future Past walk towards the screen. And we cut to credits because they would always fight. They would always train with the Sentinels. But like the shot of them all in their costumes might be the greatest single shot yeah. in the X-Men franchise. It was great. It was an amazing one second. Yeah. Yeah. And like, again, like as many movies as Hugh Jackman has been in, it's probably like 10 now. We're finally going to get Wolverine in the yellow Wolverine costume. I know, as a joke. Finally in Deadpool. Almost as a joke we're getting Right. It. Yeah. Like, Ryan Reynolds, he's like, we know what you guys want. Finally, give us what we want, for the love of God. Give me what I want. Yeah. So, yeah. 
Awesome way to end it. We have a post credit scene that sets up Logan uh, back at Stryker's base. The cleanup, the cleanup crew is mopping up the blood. And I like that one guy's like vacuuming up all the bullets. Yeah. And then some men in suits. That's got to be a crazy job. What'd you do today? And just vacuum up 30,000 bullets. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a couple men in suits open a fridge and take a vial uh, labeled Weapon X. And then, you know, they lived happily ever after. There were no other X-Men movies after this. You know, no one else died. Gene Thankfully. Grey didn't go crazy and kill everyone. It was a horrible movie. Oh Nothing boy. else. That's it. Oh Thankfully, boy. they stopped here with the perfect ending. Perfect ending. Didn't ruin it at all. Yeah. Oh, so they just Don't see our Dark Phoenix. Uh, oh, okay. I got which. I thought you meant they went straight to Logan after this. No. Oh. Mm. But Logan also I don't know is if like. I saw Dark Logan Phoenix. is also like, wait, so Professor X killed all the mutants in the whole world? Yeah. Really? I have to I have to buy into that shit. Right. That's a hard pill to swallow for any fan. Yeah. It's way too depressing. But what do you guys want to give this out of 10? I guess I'm gonna go. I hate doing point fives, but I feel like this is the perfect seven point five if there ever was one. Seven point five. I was gonna say eight. But I'll roll to eight if I if since I don't like point fives. Yeah, I I really liked it. This is the first time seeing it too. I I really enjoyed it. I think they did a great job with Apocalypse just being unbeatable. The ending payoff was so good. Eight point oh, five for me. So it's a nine for me. Yeah. So. Uh, what uh, what trivia you got there? Yeah, interesting so I got a couple facts things. from the movie. Yeah, who's the only X Men to uh, not be referred to as any name in the entire film? Uh, like they don't even. Oh, it's it's Psylocke, right? No. Oh, they say her name once. They say her name one time. One yeah. time. This X Men Storm. Storm. Yeah. Storm no, does not get Storm. named. Not Storm. She doesn't not have a name. Rolo Monroe, or whatever. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, Tom Hardy and Idris Elba were both considered for the role of Apocalypse. That went to uh, Oscar Isaac. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, Tom Hardy, this would have been two years after Dark Knight Rises, you know, yeah. so that would have been a very similar role. <laughs> yeah, true. And Oscar Isaac, like, went on record in 2021 or 22. Yeah. Saying, like, he didn't like the movie, but he's not going to shit on it. But, like, it just wasn't the movie he thought it was going to be or something. Right. Um, Sophie Turner became interested in the role of Jean when she received an overwhelming response from fans online. Um, that's another kind of fan service thing mm. where, like, everyone's like, she'd be a great Jean Grey. Right. Um, and then she had to go through all of these different auditions and casting process. She called Three Months of Hell, reading, mm. waiting for the next round. Towards the end, before she was formally cast, she became frustrated as she didn't receive a response from the producers. Um, and it was just, they were just kind of negotiating um, like her obligations to Game of Thrones. That was really mm. the main thing that kind of stopped them from telling her right away. You uh, know, it's interesting yeah. because, you know, you, you, when you see Dark Phoenix, go back to the end of Days of Future Past, okay? X Men goes back to present time, Jean Grey's alive. Then you go to Dark Phoenix and a younger Jean Grey dies. What the fuck? It totally fucks everything up. That Dark Phoenix movie. Sorry, I just had to get that off my chest. Yeah. <laughs> um, Ellie Fanning, uh, Chloe Grace Moretz, Haley Steinfeld, uh, Daisy Ridley, Lily Collins were all kind of considered for Jean Grey before mm. she was cast. And this was the first time in the franchise where Mystique's blue body is achieved by other means than applying body paint. Mm. So they did it all digitally. Yeah. And then um, in Dark Phoenix, like, she looked even worse. Like, it was oh, terrible in Dark Phoenix. It was silly, yeah. Uh, I, Oscar Isaac had to dub almost all of his dialogue um, because the sounds of his bulky rubber costume moving <laughs> were being picked up by the microphone. Squeak, squeak, squeak. Yeah. yeah. This world. Yeah. That's uh, one funny. more trivia. He is one of three people to appear in Star Wars and an X-Men franchise movie. Can you name the other two? Os oh, Oscar Isaac. Okay. Yeah. He's one. Um, mm. Star Wars and X Men. One I think is easy, and one is hard. But you guys should know him. Hard. Hard. Well, it's about to be Pedro Pascal, but all right, I guess. Oh yeah, right. Darth Maul. Darth Maul was Toad. <laughs> oh. And then, um, oh. Anyone else want to guess? For is the that last the hard one? one? No. Uh, no, no, that was the easy one. Oh, this wow. other one played a very small role, a handmaiden in Star Wars Episode Two, Attack of the Clones. 
Oh, episode two. Yeah, Rose Burns was like one of the. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Handmaidens. Oh, one too. of Padmaidens. Yeah, okay. yeah. So let's see. Do I got one more? Um. Yeah, already told you about that. The Quicksilver scene took. Uh, yeah, it took like I think like thirty days. Yeah, it says one and a half months to film. Actually, filming it for the three minute sequence. Cray cray. Cray cray. And again, decade earlier, or probably a decade plus earlier than Flash, but. So much better. Oh, let me end so with this. Better. So Jennifer Lawrence previously revealed that this was originally going to be her final appearance as Mystique. At the time of release, she's less than two years younger than Rebecca Romaine was when she first uh, did X-Men 2000. Yeah. X-Men Apocalypse is also, at the time of release, the last contracted film for McAvoy and Fassbender and Nicholas Hout, but all expressed interest in doing more if the scripts were good. They were all in Dark Space. Uh, they meant they meant if the money if was the good. Money was good. But that's yeah. then Jennifer Lawrence agreed to be in the the next one, and she's like, "Just kill me off immediately." Yeah, right. Can't do that. Like, I'll take twenty million, and I want to repeat appear in five minutes of this film. Yeah, exactly. Uh, all right, fan questions. Bill Capri says, uh, "Looking back on this, has got me wondering why they didn't go the Mister Sinister route." Mm. It's interesting. Like Mister Sinister was someone who would transfer his consciousness. So I guess they use that part, but yeah. sure. Uh, but no, I still liked Apocalypse. He was good. Uh, Eric, what if X-Men Infinity War think they would have done better if, in, if it was X-Men Infinity War? That's oh. interesting. Would have been interesting. I wouldn't want to erase, you know, the MCU one with right. Iron Man, Captain America, you know, everyone. Yeah. But that would have been interesting, too. Yep. I mean, pretty soon they're going to all be incorporated into the MCU. You know, Hugh Jackman says he's never going to play Wolverine again, but we'll I mean, see. That's what Daredevil, Daredevil, that's what Deadpool is doing, right? He yeah. said that before that Deadpool. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, PCJ, did you guys ever see that short lived show, Powerless? Powerless takes place in the DC universe. Uh, no, I don't even know what this is. Mm -mm. Uh, Emily Locke, uh, director of research and development at Wayne C. I don't know. This is really long, man, but. No, didn't see that. Yeah. Tony C., is there a movie or TV show that Andrew just adores but Joe loathes and vice versa? Yes. It has to be something you nearly <laughs> come to blows over. No, I mean, there's a couple that he loves and I hate and I love and he hates. Yeah. I know mine is, um, uh, what's the superhero film with the big, big blue penis? Watchmen. Watchmen. Yeah. Andrew loves Watchmen. I think it's I like a, Watchmen. I think it's a, it's a horrible Wait, film. Wait, you didn't like Watchmen, Joe? Joe. You like big giant penises, Joe? <laughs> No, I mean, Listen, I, that's a small that wasn't part of the, the reason. Movie. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah, I thought Joe, was, you like Bruno. <laughs> I love that to Joe. Bruno! That's, I love that to Joe. That's hilarious. That's, it's that's a giant the, penis. It's the penis movie to Joe. It's I the penis that. movie. No, I just, I think, I just, it's confusing and all over the place to me. And it's just kind of weird. But mm. do we need another watch for Joe? And which Maybe one that I love watch? and you hate? Uh, There's another one that's funny, like in the reverse role. I mean, you love Reacher, and I don't like Reacher. Yeah, that's a good one. Oh, that's right. a really good one. But yeah, there's there's more, sure. Have you, has anyone seen Reacher, you two? Yeah. Do you like no. Kick-Ass 2? Did you watch it or no? It's not good. Oh, it's so good. You too. like Kick-Ass 2, and I don't like Kick-Ass 2 at all. Yeah, the end. The end fight scene is amazing. Yeah. Well. yeah. Uh, let's see. Omar, one thing I loved about the X-Men movies is they always use historical events to further the story. Yeah, I think everyone liked that. Uh, I like this movie, although I feel like Magneto was a little held back, and I hated Oscar Isaac as Apocalypse. Really? He's so fucking short, and something about him just bugs me. <laughs> I can't figure it out. I miss 20th Century Fox so much. Uh, the drum roll hurts so much. Insert broken heart emoji. Wait, they said Magneto was held back? Mm -hmm. He killed billions of people. <laughs> yeah. Which I liked. I think Oscar Isaac is a great actor. One thing we forgot to mention was, was great, at the he? end of the movie, there's a news report that says, "Oh, also there are reports that Eric Lencher aided in the uh, <laughs> saving of the. He killed millions of people. So stupid. I think Charles had one more message to the world, like Eric, Eric, free Eric. Eric is innocent. <laughs> Andy Piconi pushed fire Barry as Presser X. Oh. I think Josh wrote this Pro question Professor for Professor X. Professor X, uh, Patrick Stewart, James McAfee, uh, and uh, Cedric Smith, the animated series voice. It's always hard for me to do animated. You know what I mean? Because yeah. No, I mean I know people love the Batman. Uh, it's pushed <sighs> James McAfee for me. Really? Yeah. Better, better movies. It's, better. It's so close. I though. think his character is better than 
than Patrick Stewart's Professor X. A I lot love better. Patrick Stewart so much, though. But like Professor X and Magneto in those first three films, they're so stoic. They barely show emotion. You know, like what McAfee if you had to just and... pick Days of Future Past versions of them? Because he's great in that, Patrick Stewart. I would still say McAvoy. McAvoy mm-hmm. McAvoy has uh, way more like of a story. He has uh, an arc to climb in that one. Oh no no no! Hold on, his range as an actor in these movies is way better. Yeah, I would still pick him. It'd just be very close for me. It'd be very close. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not easy, but it's McAvoy. Josh, this is your turn. Oh, no. Patrick Stewart, for sure. Yeah. I brought so much gravitas to the role. Mm. It was yeah. really good. We should tell him the truth. Right. <laughs> yeah. His voice is so iconic, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, that is all for fan questions. So make sure you subscribe to our podcast. Follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok at Hollywood Hog Pod. And become a supporter of the show at patreon.com slash Hollywood Hogwash for bonus episodes. Boom. Yeah, see you guys next time.